Just want to make sure that you're paying attention. Okay. Just want to make sure everyone's paying attention. Look, uh, bear with me today. I've got very excited. I've got AT&T here at the home office with the installation of fiber. So in the background, um, I'm just hoping that he, he promised he wouldn't disconnect right in the middle, but okay. Personal trainer talk. It is Wednesday, two o'clock. Uh, we're here to answer your questions. It's from my understanding, Doug has got a long list of questions that we have and that we're going to be fielding uh, today. And that's it. This is what we got going on every Wednesday, two o'clock Eastern standard time. We're here to answer your questions, business, whatever it is, science, helping you get to the next level. What's going on, Mr. Blake? Dude, I had to go with the, uh, with the 1080 instead of my 4k because a little technical glitch here with my camera, but you know, well, the way it goes, it's, right? It's, it's funny you say that. I, I didn't even notice uh, the difference. So this is, is this the camera from your computer? From the, from the laptop. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. How okay. cool All is right. that though? See? Well, look, you're, yeah. you're still, you're still, you're still, uh, you're still looking good. So, good. okay. All right. All right. So yes. Um, yes. what's going, what's going on, Mr. Blake? Oh, How you doing? Just, man, I'm doing awesome. It's, uh, it's warmed up a little bit down here. Is that right? What are it's we still- talking about? Dude, we're we're in the eighties. Ooh. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I see you you got your kombucha. I just finished mine. That's uh, right. Yeah. Which this is, by the way, this is a really the Kavita. Yeah. It's a it's a really good flavor. I like the the pineapple peach. It's 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 um it's not it's lower it's, in sugar. Okay, it's still got 15 grams, but for the entire bottle. So it's that not the that 60, bad. Is that the 60 calorie per bottle? deal uh, yes yes yeah. and you know I, I i wish it was 600 calories but um but you know i get get what i can <laughs> get what i can where i'm at so man i am so i'm so excited about this new learning center being built at body design university um you know i i'm gonna we're gonna share more about this as we we get started but we have uh doubled down our commitment to uh, our live training session, guys, for those of you out there considering coming to Atlanta for our two-week live course, we're uh, going to be sharing some photos and some videos soon, but we have a full-blown kitchen, commercial kitchen being built, okay, for food demonstrations on how to do weekly meal prep. So we're just, we're going to the next level. I mean, I'm, when I say we would use my kitchen to use, to do demos in the past, I'm not joking. Like we would use my <laughs> kitchen. And before that, we used to rent an Airbnb uh, to, uh, to do some of the food prep demos with the class. But we have literally a kitchen being built in our new learning center at Body Design University to teach trainers from all over the world how to efficiently meal prep on a tight budget and a tight schedule. And um, I'm really excited about it. I mentioned that before the call, Doug, that I had the opportunity to go over there and meet with the the builder and, um, you know, looking at the cabinets and how everything's going to be set up. You are going to be loving this island. Like literally, he's building a meal prep island that's, I think it's seven foot wide and it's three, 30 inches deep. So it's like, Everything's wow. right behind you, the, the, the sink, everything, but to do, to lay everything out. And then on the other side of the island is the classroom. Nice. Like literally there's the classroom. It's, it's, re- it's really going to be, it's going to be so cool. And I think the students uh, coming in are going to absolutely just gotta, love it. Now I got to, now I got to bring the heat, huh? You got to up your game. Now I got to up my game. Yeah. And it was already pretty. Look. Um, right. your, your, right? your current, no. your current rating is 9.5 out of 10. Ouch. So you, you've done pretty good. Um, Ouch. I don't know how you get it to a 9.7, but look, that's what we're, that's what yeah, we're that's shooting what we're for. After. So anyhow, really exciting stuff going on. Uh, another big uh, development is the software. Obviously, uh, we've got some massive updates being released in the operating system for personal trainers. Um, so just kind of working through a bunch of that stuff right now, but I'm excited to be here with you, Mr. Blake very and, cool, very and answer, cool. answer these questions. Um, are you ready to get started? Yeah. Yeah. We got some, and we got some good questions that, uh, that came in this week. So I'm ready to, I'm ready to get going. If you are, I'm, I'm excited. So are we flipping the table today? You're going to, you're going to handle these questions. I'm going to, I'm going to handle it. 
Okay, awesome. And I, 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 I mean, I, I try to, I try to keep my level of uh, expertise and professionalism at mm. your level. Mm. So just correct me if I'm, okay. if I struggle at all. Okay. It, you know, you know, I don't have a problem doing that. Okay. All right, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right big dog. Tell me what yeah, you got. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you're ready to get started, right? Yeah. Let's do it. Who's the first person? Where question, are they from? What's the question? Question one. This is uh, uh, Greg. I guess it's Greg Summers. He's from Fort Worth, Texas. Have you ever been to Fort Worth? You know, I've drove, I've flown through there. I think Dallas, Fort Worth, there's an airport that it's called Dallas slash Fort Worth. I don't know that I've drawn through there, but um, is it well, uh, is it next to Dallas? Um, I forgot how close it is. I'm not sure. It's like it's sister city or, you know, they say Dallas Fort Worth. It's hot. That's all I know. It's just it's. Look, yeah, they say Texas. I say it's hot. That's where I would move. All right. So Greg, right. Greg, Greg asks, uh, this is a OK question online. How much money do I need to start an online personal training business? Hmm. How much money do you need? How much money do you need to start an online personal training business? Well, I've seen people start online personal training businesses with, um, you know, I, I would say the lowest amount, probably, probably a thousand dollars, you know, um, to over fifteen thousand uh, dollars. Where is the difference? Um, you said his name was Craig. Greg, Greg, Greg. So Greg, the, the difference is this, is that basically um, sometimes starting off, uh, if you have a higher, uh, if you have a more startup capital, you're able to start your ad campaigns higher. Uh, majority of the online space uh, that we know of that's doing really well consistently, we're running ads uh, using Facebook, Instagram, or Google, and now TikTok. But um, the ad budget plays a role. So if I have five thousand dollars in capital, I can maybe start my ad campaign and my budget much higher on a daily basis. Whereas if I only have five hundred dollars in capital, I've got to start it a little bit lower, kind of work my way up. The other thing is, is like some people might invest, you know, fifteen hundred dollars in their website with a graphic designer that they hired on the net, um, and others may invest five hundred dollars on their website for, you know, the initial lead gen and the landing pages um, and, and everything else like videos, a shot produced, uh, photos taken, you know, even an online training business without having tangible uh, equipment like, you know, the exercise equipment or, for example, the fitness testing devices or the skin fold caliper or, or all these things that you would need if you're training people in person. There's still there's still costs and expenses. It is lower than starting in person, um, but it's it's all over the board. I would say at minimum, at minimum, I I would not re recommend less than my recommendation is you know not less than five thousand. I mean that's just the reality. Uh, can you do it? Yes, you can do it for less than five thousand. But I would not recommend starting an online personal training business without five thousand dollars in cash. Um, in the bank, um, and uh, preferably a line of credit or access to a credit card that that can, if things start going well, that you can you can fuel it. So I would that that would be my my thing. People can start it for as low as a thousand dollars. My recommendation is five thousand. Others I've seen start online businesses for fifteen thousand dollars and even much more. So um, so he he really has to kind of decide what it is he wants to do and how how strong he wants to begin the the marketing process, I would think, Yeah, right? you know, yes. And, and also it's like, some people are nitpickers, you know, like me kind of a little bit, right? It's like, you want, you want it to be done right, but there's a balance. You have to have this balancing act of doing it right and, and doing it, right? So some, some people battle with this. Uh, we call it paralysis analysis, where they're constantly analyzing what they, what they need to do or set up and it's and it, so much so that it keeps them from taking action forward. And so there's a balancing act between having a good enough product that people are going to be happy about from an online trainer space that when people sign on and they buy it and they're really happy about the deliverable and the experience, like from the time that they click on the ad to the landing page to the product, it, like it's all really good. And um, some people that's really important to, and they can't even start, they won't start unless 
that represents or reflects them and their quality. Um, and so for those people, they might spend a little bit more. Others, I'm going to tell you, I've seen some people do really well. I had, we had one online trainer. I'll never forget this. She was doing about $20,000 a month in online training. And I asked her to show me everything that I'm, I'm not even joking. She's, she's doing it through Instagram, direct messages, Facebook, direct messages. Yes, she's running ads, but it's, it's hilarious. It's like bare, bare bones. And she was okay. She was, she was fine with that level of delivery and the, her customers were fine with it. She was, they were paying her on a reoccurring basis. So, but somebody else, you know, they would want like their logo done. They would want their brand tightened. They'd want to have like a uniform. Uh, they'd want to have photos to, like, you know, they want to do it a little bit differently. And everyone is kind of different spectrum. So not just the ad um, budget that plays a big role, but also, um, you know, the level of quality that you want to launch at. And just, just keep in mind for everyone out there that's thinking the same thing, it's just uh, taking action is probably, I would like to say the most important thing. I mean, it's got to be, it's got to be a presentable product. It does, but taking action is where I see most trainers have the challenge. Got it. Got it. Cool. Greg, Greg. Thousand so, bucks. Uh, no okay. less. We recommend five grand. Have five grand. There's a lot of things that you have to purchase and sign up for. You got to get your domain name. got to get a landing page builder. You got to get a website builder. Uh, you got to get the logos. Got to get some photos. Got to get your Google business email. You've got uh, like all kinds of little things. I mean, it's like a list that you have to, like a checklist. I Man, I'm telling you, it's like we plan this. <laughs> if anyone, if anyone is watching, like this the is business launch. This is like a mass. Know. This is the list. Yep. Uh, this is the checklist for people to start an online personal training business. But anyhow, I hope All that right, helps, cool. Greg. Uh, cool. You want to talk about it uh, further? Jump on with us. We'd love to have a uh, awesome conversation with you about it. All right. All right. Are you ready? You ready for the? the well, this is a. This is interesting because I don't think I've ever seen. Uh, uh, client tra trainer clients, but the, uh, this is from Katie. Katie's in Columbus, Ohio. Katie Harris is from Columbus, Ohio. And <clears throat> she says, I've got, she says she's got five clients. So her question is, is I'm using cash app to build my clients. Mm. She's got, she's got five clients right now. How mm -hmm. long, how long should I stay with cash app? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Um, we see this it's very common. Look, we got to get paid and we get that. But um, as you know, and you're asking this question, I guess, because you see that it's not scalable and you want a better system. There's the main thing here is, is really, there's two, well, there's three main things. One, um, you want a reoccurring system set up. Okay. That's the first thing. It's, it's got to be personal training is a reoccurring service. It's not a service that you should have to resell yourself every month or every 10 sessions. No, no, no. You sell yourself one time and you constantly deliver and you try to deliver more and better, but you don't have to resell yourself. You just have to deliver better service. Okay. If you sell on Cash App or uh, packages of sessions, the challenge with that is that when those are up, uh, whether it's for a month or for 10 sessions, whatever it is, you got to go back to them and ask them to pay again. It's almost like you've got to represent um, you know, yourself. And that's not it. No, present it one time. So reoccurring, you've got to have an operating system that does the billing on a reoccurring basis. The second piece of this um, is really important when it comes to trainers out there using Cash App, Venmo, and these others, PayPal or whatever, is that it only tracks one part of the transaction. It only tracks one part of the transaction. As a personal training business, there's two parts. There's the credit and the debit. It's very important that you track both because, for example, when you're uh, process, I'm sorry, what was her name again? Uh, Katie. Katie, uh, when you're processing with Cash App, you're because you're tracking only one side, there's somewhere else, whether it be a notebook, an index card, a Google uh, Sheets, a Excel spreadsheet, wherever it is, you're tracking the sessions. Maybe it's on the calendar. But when the client says, how many sessions do I have? Or how many do I have left? Or, you know, when is my next session? You've got to manually go and find that out. And we've passed that. There's so much 
there's so many options out there right now for personal training software uh, to be able to do this properly. So um, generally speaking, I like trainers starting off with an operating system so they don't create a mess and they don't have a lot of back work because once you get, this is what we, this is what I found over the last 20 years with a lot of trainers. Okay. Once they start taking on and me, myself included. Okay. Um, let me get, I'll give you a perfect example. And it, it, how it's like that whole thing of how you do one thing is how you do everything. Okay. Um, I had a, personal training management company. And I said, I was going to write an operating manual. Well, at the very beginning, I had like five or eight employees. I remember saying it in my head that I need to write and create an operating manual for how the business, um, how it needs to operate because we figured it out how to do it really well. Well, 80 employees later, I still had not created it. And it was so difficult to make the time to sit down and write. I ultimately did, but it was like, it's like 60 pages. And I ultimately created an operating manual, but it it was too, it, it was it took too long to do it, and it would have helped so many people if I'd done it at the very beginning. Now, again, you can't always start with everything in place, but an operating system is one of those things I would recommend. With your question, as quickly as possible, just switch over. You you've got a proof of concept that five people are willing to pay you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a big deal. So that's great. Five people are willing to pay you for your service move over to an operating system that tracks not only the, the payment, it sets it up on a reoccurring so you don't have to go back to them and ask them. And, and you might say like, well, how does that work? It, this is how it works, okay? Katie, you have a personal training agreement and we call it a membership agreement, personal training membership agreement. And you're saying to the customer, you're agreeing to train twice a week for $500 a month, every month. And it's gonna reoccur until you wanna stop. And you could stop at any time. I don't recommend putting clients into long-term contracts. I recommend month-to-month -month agreements. It puts you in check, holds them accountable, both parties, but it reoccurs. And then if, if they want to stop, they come to you versus you having 5, 10, 20 clients and you having to go to them every month to re-up the sessions. We, we stopped that a long time ago. And so reoccurring, track both parts in an operating system tracks not only the sessions that they've paid for, but the sessions that they've used all in one place. And it automatically does the math. And it says, these are the sessions that they've used. This is what they've paid for. This is what they have left. So you always, you always know that. Um, and I would recommend that you do that right away for everyone listening. Um, it, there's so many options out there. You know, of course, look at bodydesignos.com as an option, bodydesignos.com. Uh, but there's a lot, just Google it. Um, so that's, that's what I would recommend. Um, Doug, any, any other you, thoughts um, on that? You mentioned the, um, the cards, <laughs> the index. Do you remember that? That's, that's how we did it. That People, how, yeah, Doug, I don't, we did it. I don't know if these young guns even <laughs> understand how we started this, you know, a long time ago. We, we literally, okay, this is, um, this is, this is a harmonica. Okay. This is a harmonica, but imagine oh. that this, this was a, index case. This is, um, this is the true story. And some of you guys are old enough and you, you remember this, you know what we're talking about. You can laugh with Doug and I, but we would open up this index cards case. We would open up this index card. This is, this is, again, it's a harmonica. Just imagine it's an index card box. You open it up, you'd shuffle through the members and you'd find the member's name. Okay. You'd have it sorted like, you know, by the first name or last name, you pull it out and you'd have them initial. <laughs> <laughs> they would date an initial and then you'd put their card back in, you'd close it. And that was your, oh, that, that was your file. Box. Yeah. We, we stopped initialing. We literally just told clients, um, yeah, you've got five left or whatever the case is. Yeah. I remember with well over a hundred clients, it became untenable, but, uh, yeah, it's just funny. Doug, there's some things that trainers are still doing today that, <laughs> are unbelievable like yeah that's what i remember that's what i say you got a computer you got a computer oh, by, by the way i i just i just noticed the way that you were looking at my my I harmonica was. so I let was. me let me just give you a little something okay let me just... i was well wow i've come a long way haven't i you, pretty good you have which is why <laughs> we're going to move on to question number three quickly <laughs> okay what do we got <laughs> Okay, this is from uh, Terry, Terry Hall, Atlanta. Okay, awesome. Right in Atlanta. In our hometown. Uh, 
this is a, it's a good one. It's a good one. How can I help one of my clients get more protein in her diet? She's a vegetarian and just doesn't like to eat a lot. Thanks. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, how do you get anyone to do anything? How do you get anyone to do anything? Force? No. That's Probably how you there. do it, man. But Probably see me, there. I have a higher <laughs> level of empathy and I get them to want to do it. That's, that's oh. just this. It's just it's just skill I learned wow. a long time ago. Um, you know, if you want somebody to do something, you have to figure out the motives and the way to get them to want to do it. Um, and so for clients that were vegans that I trained over the years that, um, you know, were not like some of the vegans would come in, um, Doug, it was like their hair. You could, you could tell is frail. They're, they're, I mean, the skin, it just, I'm just telling you, like it was a common challenge. The, the protein was so now they've got so many products and so many ways for them to get it in. But for example, right. I would do you like protein shakes. Do you like chocolate? Do you like this? Try this. How about this? You know, um, I want you to try this. Tell me like buy this at the store this weekend, try and tell me what you think. And, and it could be, um, low sugar yogurt that was high in protein. And at that time it was before the whole organic, mm -hmm. uh, craze, which I'm fully on board with. We all are, but it was before organics were available, you know, 10 years ago, I would, I would have them eating cottage cheese and, and these things to get and say, how do you like the way that tastes? Oh, you do. You like that? Okay. Boom. Now I'm, I'm, I'm increasing the protein. So I would find things that they like, not things that I think that they should do, not things that, um, are just high in protein, not thing. I would just have them taste and do things and try things. And then I would ask them, did you like that? Can you see yourself doing it? Can you do that? Okay. Can you do it again tonight? Can you do it tomorrow? <laughs> And then just build it in as a, as a habit. Uh, Doug, I know you've right. had success with this too. What are, what are some, some ways yeah. that you've gotten some of the clients that are vegan and, and don't consume animal protein to get in more it's, protein? Um, it's a really, it's a really pertinent question. And it's really the, the last part of the question um, where uh, Terry said she doesn't like to, she doesn't like to eat a lot. And one of the things we know um, and this is just from experience, and we know from this the, from the science and the research that um, vege those folks that are vegetarians, there's definitely some health benefits to it. But one of the things we find is that because they're focused on uh, generally lower calorie foods overall, their caloric consumption actually goes down. Mm. And again, there are some health benefits to that for sure. But guess what that does to your metabolism? Um, mm. It generally slows the metabolism down and that's that hunger, the hunger signaling uh, doesn't occur. I know you, holy cow. I mean, of all the people that are hungry that need to eat, it's you, right? So, mm. but you have a very fast metabolic rate. Um, I'm hungry all the time. Um, and so that fast metabolism is due to a higher consumption of general calories. So generally with somebody that's a vegetarian is um, I try to get them. And again, today you can actually suggest the pea proteins and the other uh, vegetable proteins that are, mm -hmm. they're great. They're really very good because they're using uh, different types of vegetables to, to get the amino acid profiling. That's so important, but generally, like you said, I'm going to try and get them to, um, to consume products that they like, and then try and uh, get the combos. Mm. Um, so for instance, classic example is I know, um, vegetarians, um, and vegans, for instance, that love, you know, they love rice and, and they've never tried tofu mm -hmm. just as a, for instance, soybean, soybean protein, not that I'm going to recommend it, but for somebody that needs that increased level of protein. Oh yeah. And soy and soy products, by the way, have gotten really, really good, um, mm. with, you know, sort of modern technology of uh, in the food industry. So yeah, I know you, you'll eat tofu, right? If it's Oh man, I just, I'm so excited when I see it on my plate. I'm just so fired up. <laughs> not, not really. Well, but... well, those, so normally that's yes. what I have done um, is I, is I suggest okay. those higher plant, plant-based protein foods, because look, plant-based protein is not for human consumption, it's not good protein. It doesn't mean that vegetables and vegetable matter is mm -hmm. not good. It's critical, but from a protein intake standpoint, you've got to eat more of it. And so that's sort mm -hmm. of the, 
sort of the balance. And like you said, what is it that you like to eat? Well, I do like to eat black beans. Have you ever tried pigeon peas? Have you ever tried? And, and so there's a, a plethora of beans out there that are generally, you know, low in one, one essential amino acid that can be matched with, and this is where the whole food combining scenario comes in. So with rice, yeah, eggs or some, or some grass based material. It doesn't have to be rice, yeah. okay. but there are many other grasses out there mm -hmm. that now we have access to. So, yeah, um, but man, it's a, look, we struggle with it today with our clients that are, that are vegetarians and vegans. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a, it's just, it's been the same thing for all these years. Just find something that they like. If, if you find something that they like, then they're going to like it. And they're going to consume it more. How about that? Have and you tried the um, Have you tried the Impossible Burger? The Impossible Burger. I, I have not. If no, it's in, have I. if it's in a box, I will not eat a burger that, that comes from that, a box. It's that vegetable thing that's supposed to have the texture. Yeah. Of meat. Well, you know, look, there's some. Uh, there are some great products out there, no doubt. But but Doug, uh, come on. Burger it's processed. It's processed. Oh come on. yeah, come, I know. I mean, so I, so uh, again. The main takeaway here, how do you get a vegan? And if they're a true vegan, that's a really serious. How do you get a vegan to consume more protein? Find something that they really like that is vegan, like, and, and have them to keep trying different things and, that are high in protein. And then once they do, then they'll consume it and they'll, you won't have to like constantly trying to chase them to, to get in the protein that they need. Uh, but and Doug I, makes and, a good point, you know, make sure that they're on their cat, they're, they're hitting their calories as well. But remember today, um, if they're serious, if a, if a vegetarian is serious and they're trying to gain lean body mass, um, again, fortunately today, there are plant-based protein products out there that can be purchased that I would highly recommend to an individual to use for their, you know, for their snacks, their shakes, things like that too. To, to but look, if they're a true vegan, if they're a true vegan, like not a vegetarian, but a vegan, okay, how are they going to get the product? Like, because they like, <laughs> they're against like sitting on leather seats or having leather seats in the car. Oh. I'm sorry. Did I just, wow. I, I, it, but I mean, so, okay. Amazon delivers, but there's, I'm pretty sure I'm I, look. Okay, that's another, enough, I, that's another just, conversation, but get them to want to do it. That's how you get them to consume more protein. Get them to want to. You know, you know what contains protein, protein that's vegan. Just get them to want to. Okay, cool. Well, I hope that, that just, helps. That, uh, yeah. So, Terry, you got to talk to your, you got to talk to your client first and have a good sit down conversation and, and put that, put the hammer down on them too. Right? Yeah. Hey, okay. sometimes you got to use brute force. All right. Are you, are you ready for the, I'm uh, ready. Okay. So this is from uh, Gainesville, Florida. Okay. Awesome. So, uh, Florida, Jackie, Central Florida. Jackie, Jackie with an I E Jackie. So that's a girl, okay. right? Yep. Yep. Jackie, I guess Jackie Evans, Could the club be. I'm so Jackie's, I guess she's training. The club I'm training at allows independent contractors mm. to use their scheduling software. Their scheduling. So, do you think I should get my own? Hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, hmm, Jackie, that really depends on the business relationship with that facility. That's a great question, though. And, um, you know, the fact that they're letting you use their scheduling software, that's great. Um, are you an independent 1099 that's contracted with the gym or are you an independent trainer that pays rent? Does it say on that, that question, nope. Doug? Okay. So if you're an independent contractor, 1099 that um, is contracted with that gym to provide services there, I wouldn't be as opposed to using their technology they're paying for. If it works and you like it, then yes. If that, if it's a good system, um, but if you're a rent trainer, no, I would highly recommend that you have your, your own, uh, even the same one, if you want to, and just license it separately, um, because you're running your own business. Um, you know, it's, it, I can't tell you how many times, uh, things go South for whatever reason. And then the trainer is having to start from scratch and which they should have from the very beginning, because they were, 
an independent. Um, but so great question. If you can use ERS, you're an independent, great 1099, use it um, because you're only contracted with them for those clients, I would guess. If you're independent and you're contracted with them and you're training people outside of the facility and using their system, absolutely not. Then I would definitely change as a 1099 too. But if you're only using it to train clients that you're 1099 contracted to train within that facility, sure, go for it. If you're paying rent, no, get your own uh, uh, software and scheduling system. Doug? Yeah, I remember the contractors and the commercial clubs that I've that I've run. Um, yeah, generally, the I've done it both ways where you would we got the scheduling and we've got people coming in and it gave the, it gave the contractor the ability to simply have the, the client that was coming in for a schedule. I mean, we were making money off it anywhere, one way or the other. Um, so yeah, I've done it in multiple ways yeah. and I've seen independent contractors do it, uh, do it both ways. So, um, you know, would it, it matter, it, would it matter about the number of clients or? No, no, that's not as big of a deal. I mean, Obviously, look, if you're talking about working with three or four people, then even if you're paying rent, use your system because you don't want to have to pay for something that like it's that's not a full time gig. It's not even I don't even know if that's a part time gig, but, you know, basically use their system. But I'm talking about if you're running a book of business and you're running your business like you're a full time. This is what you do for a living. Independent contractor with them, use their software. Rent trainer, full book of business, absolutely have your own system, your own schedule, your own everything, your own everything, and just uh, pay rent. But you're right. It can get squirrely with the business owner, right? If things go. If things yeah, go I mean, south. you know, yeah. and, and sometimes it's, it's not even with that business or owner. It could be where the business owner says, you know what? I don't want to be in the health club uh, business anymore. I, I want to be in the dry cleaning business. And they sell it to somebody else that now they want a different deal, a totally different deal with you, or they don't want you in there at all, or they want you to work as an employee, not 1099. And, and like, you're just, the rug is just swept. I've seen this countless times with trainers all over uh, the U S and um, as an independent, especially when you're paying rent, there's no reason for that because you're running your own business and you should be running your own operating system, not using theirs. So I hope that helps. Um, you know, that's yeah, a great question. Thank you for bringing that from, uh, Gainesville, okay. Florida. Yeah. Gainesville, Florida. Okay. What do we got up next? All right. Next question. Um, how do I get certain clients to stop smoking? Man, I, gosh, I wish I knew the answer to that. I wish William, I, Doug, William. you, you, I hope you have some better insight. I've, I've got a couple friends, um, <laughs> childhood, you know, um, that, uh, you know, most of my friends are, 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 you know, practice a healthy fit life, but I've got some that don't. And, um, one of them is wanting to quit. And I was just, I was just presented with this the other day. And he was like, what do you recommend? What do you recommend? And, yeah. And, and look, the only recommendation I gave him and I'll give you is this is like, um, like everything that comes out of my mouth is like exercise, you know, eat healthy. And what I told him, I said, look, this is what I found my clients doing clients that joined a, the, the program and were, were smoking, um, wanted to get into a health kick and get into it. And because they were dedicating so much time and energy to their, to their fitness and to their wellness, it, they didn't want to smoke. It's, it's almost like that whole thing for fit people. Like when you're regularly exercising and taking care of your body, you don't want to eat trash. You don't want to sit and eat Skittles all, all day or, or at night after you're exercising and eating healthy foods. And so my recommendation to him was like, just surround yourself around, you know, scenarios that are healthy, bring that into your body, uh, through exercise, through nutrition, and then, uh, it will le likely, you know, make it so you don't want to smoke as much. Now it doesn't change the chemical dependency of nicotine, but it, it does, it does help psychologically. Uh, Doug, I, I hope you, you can help this, this, uh, this person. Yeah. More. William, William Athens, Athens, Georgia. Where's Athens? Athens okay. North, Athens, like North, Northeast or, or Northeast. Northeast. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And I would assume that it's, I don't know. Is it a big problem smoking in that area? I don't know. Who knows? Um, 
Yeah, so here's here's the deal. If you're a smoker, you're an addict. You're addicted. You're addicted to nicotine. So how do you deal with addictions? I mean, this is this is sort of the the whole stages of change model that you learn when you go through like a training course. You know the um, uh, pre contemplation, contempl all this other stuff. So behavioral change stuff because people are addicted. You have to first ask a basic question: How much? How much do you smoke? I've I've known people that mm. that they're quote smokers, and they smoke two cigarettes a day or something like that, and they or they smoke just after a meal mm -hmm. or whatever the case, all the way up to who? Three packs a day. I mean, chain chain smokers. And like you said, one mm. of the things that I've one of the things that I've done is I've is I work people, especially through cardio training a lot of cardio, because what that does is it makes it very uncomfortable to remain smoking. Because as you're, as you're putting this high level of stress on the cardiorespiratory system, they can't breathe well. And so for some folks that yeah. helps, that helps them make that decision. Like you were saying, kind of helps them make that decision and go, man, I just can't, can't catch my breath. But here's an interesting thing, because having worked at a hospital, I know you can do the whole nicotine patch. You can help people to get off of the harmful mm -hmm. smoking part of it. So there's two, mm -hmm. two components to it, right? There's the nicotine, which is going to damage, damage your heart, the heart muscle because of the nicotinic receptors has a preferential damaging effect on the arteries in the heart. So that's bad enough. But then mm. the smoke. So you got nicotine, bad mm but it's a chemical and you can get nicotine from a patch, but then there's also the actual pollutant that is the smoke itself. So there is the tar. So that's what's affecting the, uh, the bronchial, bronchial tubes and then ultimately the alveoli in your lungs. So there's these mm -hmm. multiple effects. So if you can get people to at least stop one part of it, right? First step mm -hmm. is to stop the, this part of it by hitting them with a patch and getting the nicotine well, they're still an addict, but they are only addicted now to the nicotine and the smoking part. That's mm. step number one. I've seen it enough times to where sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but for the most part, what you have to do. do Doug, your, your audio is cut off on us. No audio. Nothing yet. No audio yet. You can just like mouth, like lip sync and I'll just like try to say what you're saying. Yeah, no, uh, we're not getting any audio from Mr. Blake right now. Uh, you want to try to unplug, plug back in, see what's going on here. How's that? Okay. There you go. Am I back? Go. Okay. Um, so, so the idea then is that uh, individuals are going to have a struggle when they don't, obviously when they don't smoke because they're not getting the, they're not getting the chemical in their body, but that's where you come in as the trainer. You're the coach, you're mm. the motivator. You're the, look, most folks don't, they don't have, they don't have a Corey and they don't have a Doug to slap them on the back, give them a high five because they didn't smoke for two days. Sometimes the trainer is the, is one of the, the very That's reasons right. why somebody is able to navigate past the addiction, um, mm. that they're dealing with. And, and you're right, exercise and eat. All of those are helpful and uh, enough people are able, enough people have done it and enough people continue to do it to where we know that, um, uh, it's not impossible to do so. So, so let me, the, the takeaway from that, Doug, is like basically uh, get them to stop one of the elements, whether it be like, let me ask you this. How much do you know about the, the vaping the devices? Are, are you familiar with those, Doug? Yeah. So, yeah. so what, what I don't, and I'm just ignorant to this, but what are they doing? Are they, they like vaping? They're, they're getting the nicotine, but they're not getting, they're, they're not getting the tar, right? Correct. You're, it's not smoke. You're not inhaling smoke. You're inhaling water vapor. vapor of course, the problem, water, the, right. The problem, the problem with, with vaping is, is that liquid, that mm -hmm. liquid, if you, if you ever, you ever know somebody that had asthma and they use a, um, they use a nebulizer. Have you ever seen a nebulizer? Yeah, yeah I have. Yep. Well, that's what, that's what the machine is doing. Mm. It's, 
it's taking the liquid and it's it's essentially mechanically which um, has nicotine in it. it it has well there it is the nicotine is probably the least of you <laughs> the least of your worries but it has and this is where the studies now kind of reveal it's other chemicals and there it is so now now you're just putting more chemicals into one of the most um sensitive areas of the of the human body, which is the alveoli of the lungs. And so the transmission of chemicals and poisons through, um, through, the, um, through the alveoli or the air sacs in your lungs um, makes it so, very easy. So let me ask you, do they recommend smokers out there to go to, you know, go to, go to vaping and then, and then stop vaping? Is, is that a stepping stone? I haven't, I haven't heard, I mean, I haven't heard doctors say that, but there it is. What's, you know, which one are you going to choose? If you smoke a cigarette, you're getting the double whammy. If you vape, you're not getting the smoke, the tar, but you're getting these other, these other chemicals that are in that liquid. Manufacturers are making these, obviously there's got to be chemicals in them to make them mm -hmm. um, shelf stable and um, able to be uh, the particle size to be broken down into the appropriate size for to become a vapor, and so now you're picking one, you're picking one poison mm. for another. Is it better? And it and it does contain nicotine for the most part, right? These things. Um, are I I'm pretty sure that they do. Yeah, I mean yeah. I, that was kind of like the point why you don't want a 16 year old vaping. Mm. Um, but again, because it still has, it yeah. still has, if it, what if about it has some of these, it, what about some of those other things where you see people like there, I don't know if they're smoking pot with it or, but it's like a, it's like a little device. And I guess it, it's, it's not a, it's not like a pipe or like a little, you know, pot pipe where people, you know, smoke pot out of, but it's, I don't even know what to call it, but it's, it's like an, um, dude, name. I just want to, I just wanted to say you showed really good technique when you <laughs> dude no look just, I, do, no. I was just making an a, a hey I look just... i i stopped smoking the wacky tobacco when i was a teenager i say i stopped gotcha. it because that's when i now are you it. talking about the little the little it's like a handle a little palm well it, it's like handle. a little it's like a little device and they put weed or or tobacco in there and it's supposed to burn clean i don't look i don't know but they're supposed to burn cleaner or something like that. Maybe we can get some. Look, is there if there's anyone from California or one of these <laughs> legal states? Um, yeah, you know, yeah. on the on the channel, join us. Tell it. Just explain it to us. Tell us about vaping. Tell us about. But uh, here, these... but here, ultimately, is the issue with this is that you're you're not folks that are doing that are substituting. They're substituting one uh, one health um, health right. issue for it for another. Yeah. And, um, I d look, I do know, I do know folks where vaping is probably the best thing for them because of the life sure. they've led They're they're whatever the case is, they, they need something. And that is probably of all your options versus the tar of a cigarette. Yeah. There's a, no, that's a, to me, that's a no brainer. You know, we went through, we've been going through the bodies exhibit for a long time mm. before they, they shut down for COVID. I mean, some of those were just, oh man, yeah, that was, that was, yeah, that was it's gruesome. A, it's a great idea to have people go there. Any, anybody that, you know, that's a smoker, you can still, I guess you can still go yeah. online and kind of take a look. Um, and yeah. you can just Google it anyway, because the tar, and by the way, tar is just one, one substance. It doesn't even include the other 250 to 300 known carcinogenic mm. chemicals that are mm. in, that are just in smoke. Um, yeah. But again, I, I don't know about you, but the smokers that I know, the vast majority of them, they don't want to smoke. They no, don't. that's that's true. My buddy, he doesn't want like to, it. and he and he asked for help. And and you know, and I didn't really have some good I didn't really have any good advice. Look, I'm a I'm I'm in personal training, not you know, without without good accountability, without like a personal trainer, that's what we do. We provide accountability. And mm -hmm. without it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a struggle more than yeah. likely. So Okay. So those that look, those are our tips when it comes to helping people quit smoking. Um, if you just get their body moving, I am telling you, that's, that's going to help a bit. Um, I will tell you, just be ready. And for those of you that are watching in, and have experienced, you know, what I'm talking about when you get somebody started that's smoking and if they're heavily smoking, man, they're going to, 
they're going to have a very difficult time and you've got to take it very, very slow with them doing even just a set of chest press can get them winded. I mean, literally chest press, like doing, doing some, some basic exercises, um, you know, really challenges their cardiovascular system. So just got to be really careful with those that are smoking, but, but be their inspiration, be their motivation, be, be their oasis. They're, they're, they're making positive. They're trying to make positive changes in their life and their body and their health. And at minimum, just being, uh, that consistent encouragement of them showing up and then, and telling them that they're doing good. These things, people don't, you know, because they're, 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 they're not the steps of breaking a habit. They're not the steps of reducing nicotine. They don't talk about them, but I'm telling you in my experience, encouragement of a client plays a role in helping them stop smoking, helping them stop eating trash, doing, you know, watching Netflix all night, whatever it might be that you're trying to help them, just that encouragement can go a long way. So that's, those are our recommendations. I hope it was helpful. All right. That was William. William. All right. Are you ready for the next? I am ready. What do we got? Ashley from Charlotte, North Carolina. Dude, okay. Charlotte is a beautiful, beautiful. It really city. is. To have, like, the downtown area too of Charlotte, North Carolina is, mm-hmm. it's a pretty place. Oh yeah. I just got my uh, NASM certification. Congrats. Mm. Okay. Um, can I now do online training? Yeah. Great question. Um, look, you can do online training with or without a NASM certification. You could do online training. You could, you can literally like open a studio, a personal training studio. Matter of fact, you can open up a personal training. Fr- Why do I always have to go to the ex- extremes? <laughs> you could do whatever you want. Nature. I wish it wasn't this way. Both Doug and I wish that there was more regulation on the personal training industry. Um, we really do, uh, but it's not. So when you ask the question, can you? Yes, you can. Do you recommend, uh, do we recommend, do you, do we recommend that you start? Look, uh, yes, that we, we like to say that, uh, because we're partners with, uh, NASM, um, they have one of the best programs out there for personal trainers and the certification process, um, along with the American council on exercise and yes, several others. Those are the two that we play with and they're great companies, great organizations. What that does by getting your certification, it doesn't prepare you to be an online trainer, really. It really doesn't. It, it, but it, do, it does kind of. Let me explain. So it gives you the, the confidence to feel like you have an acceptable level of knowledge when it comes to the exercise primarily. Okay, so that helps, right? So you're going to do online training. Having confidence that you can put together programs, you know, that's where that could help a little bit. But online training is, there's a lot to it. Nutrition coaching, uh, advertising, you know, systems of efficiency, uh, marketing, you know, uh, different than advertising. Um, These are things that are really important that NASM does not teach, okay? Um, And to be successful as a personal trainer, an online personal trainer or in-person personal training, personal trainer, we do not believe that NASM is the only element that you can have to, to make it really. Um, and, and neither does NASM, by the way, that's why they partner with schools like body design university and other schools throughout the nation. Um, because they know that some folks most, um, especially trainers, because we're tactile people, we learn by doing, uh, should go through some type of hands-on program and okay. Hands-on meaning not, just NASM certification through a book. That's all they offer if you go through NASM only directly. But also that that they they want to uh, provide their candidates for certification, more training in business and, and nutrition. And this is where they've they've uh, attempted and and are trying to assist by the uh, CNC nutrition coaching certification by you know business accelerator these different programs that they have. Um, you know so. I hope that answers your question, but yes, now that you've got your NASM, you can start becoming an online trainer, but you could start becoming an online trainer before that. It's just, it's just a good idea to have that first. Um, but there's these other elements too. Um, one of the reasons that Body Design University exists 
is to provide all the elements. That's that's all we do. That's that's all we do is help trainers become successful online trainers and successful in-person trainers. And hopefully, if they so desire, be successful studio owners. You know, we've been doing this for a while. This is what we do. And so online training, um, NASM certification, that's one piece that can help. But there's a lot of other uh, pieces. Human behavior, as I said, nutrition, marketing, advertising, business systems, elements, efficiencies, you know, you, you name it. So, uh, Doug, what do you, what do you think? What are, what are yeah, your thoughts I mean, there? <clears throat> at this, at this point on, and it's funny because we, we hear this, you know, on our Facebook group, just as a, for instance, we get this all the time. Mm. Can I do this now? Am I allowed to, uh, you know, is it okay if I, and, and the reality is, is that do whatever you want to do. I mean, depending on the level of confidence that you have in particular with your, uh, with your, um, ability to operate a business or whatever the case is, you can pretty much do anything at any time. What NASM, NASM, ACE, ACSM, NSA, what they all do is provide you a base level of knowledge. And, uh, that's the critical uh, part here. It doesn't, it doesn't really help. It doesn't help the public. It doesn't help potential clients. It doesn't help you if you don't know the difference between a quadricep and a hamstring, doesn't help anybody if, if you don't know the difference between a, a, a bench press and what it works or a lateral raise and what it works. I mean, this is the mm. base level of knowledge. Um, and that gets, you, that gets you into the arena now where you can actually start to uh, provide the services. And so- um, Play ball. Yeah, I mean, it's- You can start to play ball. Exactly. You know, you know, I, I remember, I remember um, a good friend of mine and most of my brothers were in martial arts. And I remember their, uh, my one brother <clears throat> whose uh, sensei was a, I guess it was a fourth or fifth Don black belt. And he, he told me, cause I didn't understand what the belt system was. He said, you know, all the belts leading up to black belt are meaningless. He says, mm. it says when you become a black belt, that's when you become a student. I don't know if that makes sense. What, mm. he, what he was saying is that everything else is just kind of preliminary. It's like when you become a black belt, he says, that's when you can start learning because now you have learned all of the basic knowledge necessary to where you can actually start learning. So that's kind of like what, what getting a certification is, is um, yeah, okay, now you got this, but man, you got to get in there and yes, get in there and start, start training people. And online training is great. Um, but I'll tell you what you should. What should they be doing? They should be training themselves for sure, right? Look, man, I'm still, themselves. I'm still, I'm still stuck on the whole black belt thing. I mean, that that's pretty awesome yeah, stuff. Yeah, was that that was pretty that, that pretty was pretty cool, good. Huh? I have to say that was pretty good. Like, so yeah. can can we start to say like once they go through the six modules at Body Design University, they okay, can don't. now become a student? Come on, man, it's not. I mean, look, but seriously like yeah once you get your certification like that's when you actually start learning it i, I mean yeah. i think that's a fair fair statement a lot of people think like okay i'm gonna get certified and now i'm gonna go start training no actually that's when you really start to learn once you like you mm -hmm. don't start to learn until you start training people like of course you're gonna get to the education but and it's interesting because it's 2022 remember in the 1980s and the 1990s i don't trainers how old were you? You were still what? Dude, uh, I was four, four years. Yeah, was four um, years so. Way back when, the only people that were trainers were were bodybuilders, were mm. weightlifters. So there was already a base level. Now today, and I'm not saying this is a good or bad thing. I'm just mm -hmm. saying today we're finding a lot more individuals that don't have a foundational background in exercise resistance training themselves. And so you've got to get this basic level. You've got to understand what a concentric contraction is. You've got to understand all these little, you know, basic, uh, uh answer basic me this points of information and answer me this. How did I, how did I do an interview with a personal trainer candidate not too long ago that has a master's degree in exercise science? <laughs> and does not did not and could not answer the question what attaches bone to bone <sighs> how, how does that happen honestly like how do, how does has it happen 
I, I don't, I don't I, look know. the point the point is is that certification is a good ex it, it, you know acceptable level of knowledge okay but you start learning as you start to to train people and um there's no regulations that answer your question you can do whatever you want yes you got your nasm certification congrats by the way good job on that um we want we want people to be certified not only for themselves for the public yeah. and everything else but it does not it does not make a great personal trainer application mm -hmm. of those things and other things over time make you a great trainer yep cool yeah by the way we're seeing a lot of healthcare folks nurses therapists folks that never exercise but they pass but they pass their certification because it's some anatomy physiology they already know it they need um, to stay in their lane okay they need they need to stay they need to stay in their lane this is this is the personal training industry. Look, well, but okay. you know where that lane you know where that lane leads to. Yeah, we, no, we don't want to. We don't look live our live we'll, course. We'll Maybe. refer you some folks, but live just course. don't 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 come into our. Could they? Could they? Could they benefit from coming to the live course? Are you kidding me? Look, anyone that has any desire to be a personal trainer or know anything about the personal training industry uh, can benefit from our live course. Uh, by the way, guys, we're celebrating, um, we are literally celebrating 20 years this year. In July, we're celebrating 20 years uh, teaching personal trainers through Body Design University. And right. um, there's a reason why, look, some people get different things from the course. Some people just the confidence builder, like the, their, their, their chest sticks out, like when they get done with the course and they just walk differently. Some people, it's the nuggets of uh, information on science and nutrition that clicks and helps them. It's some people, it's the, the business elements that they never thought about and didn't realize how important these things are and how to put them together. But to answer your question, yes. I mean, look, anyone can that wants to do anything in the personal training space could uh, get a high return on investment from coming to the Body Design University two-week live course in Atlanta, Georgia. I got one more, one more, one quick one. Okay. Okay. We got and three minutes. What you got? Okay. What is the best pre-workout supplement? Donnie from Denver. The best pre-workout supplement? Uh, well, do you yes. want to, do you want to know what the best pre-workout supplement is right now or from like 10 years ago, like 10 years ago? Hey guys, is that your, is that your wave, AT &T guy? wave, yeah, wave hi to that. See, oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, I appreciate that. Classic. So, 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 yes, man. Um, best pre workout. Look, I don't even want to say this because it could be. I don't know if my insurance will cover this, you know, for liability reasons. But <laughs> I'll tell you what. Back in the day when we used to take ephedra, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I know, I, I said it, but look. Uh, what's the best pre-workout? Honestly, no pre-workout. I'm just telling you, look, look, I've been doing this a long time. I've helped a lot of people and um, I do not and would not recommend clients to take any type of pre-workout. Um, you know, if you're coaching them to develop healthy eating habits and, um, you know, a, a sustainable lifestyle, do you really want them, do you really want them mixing a pre-workout every day? time that they exercise for the next 20 years or do you do you want them just to do it right now for like the next three six months it's just to me that doesn't make sense i i want you it's my recommendation that you uh follow and may share some of the same belief that i have is like let's get them set up on something that is sustainable that's healthy that they want to do that doesn't require these these supplements and and things they're, they're just not needed i know your question was what is the best one but i'm not gonna What's the, and what's I'm the main ingredient? There. What's the main ingredient in pretty much every single pre-workout supplement? Caffeine. Have a cup of coffee. That's the main ingredient, right? I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some others, but go oh, have yeah. an espresso. And and look, I'm not saying that I don't enjoy a little espresso. Matter of fact, as soon as I get off here, I think I'm gonna go make a. That's an espresso, a great but, idea. But uh, but great question. But please, if you're a personal trainer out there and you're gonna be coaching other people, don't don't recommend pre-workout. Just don't do that. One, if you're certified, it goes against everything that your certifying agency um, holds you to. But two, yeah. it's just it's just not good for the clients. Doug, what say yeah. you? What what yeah. can you add to this? I'm look, I'm um with you. I know I get tired before my workouts. If I'm tired and it's I I get it. 
I do understand it. I know people all over always asking me what is the best uh, pre-workout. And the answer is, I, I don't know, because it's just not a supplement that, that I take. It's not a supplement that I even wait, recommend. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Let's be fair. Unless it's Say coffee. Anymore. Say anymore. Say anymore. Oh, oh, dude, that's. But they, but they need to know that. They need to. Oh. Look, you guys need to know, Doug and I, we oh, man. took a lot of supplements. OK, a lot of different supplements. OK, wink, wink, wink. And, and what we're saying is that not that we're just saying we wouldn't recommend it anymore. It's just and look, and it doesn't matter what fitness level you are. I don't care if you're competitive at whatever the case is. But for the general population of personal trainers, they Doug, haven't checked off. They haven't checked off the other boxes. They're not training. correctly. Right. They're not getting enough recovery. They ain't sleeping well and they're not eating well. But and we have them take. A now we're taking a pre-workout. Stop the madness. It makes it just, yeah, it makes no sense. Look, um, thank you for uh, joining us today. Every Wednesday, two o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Doug and I are here for you. Thank you. Those were incredible questions this week from all over. Uh, we're happy to be here and answer these for you. If you do want to take it to the next level or you want to spend a couple of weeks with Doug and I in Atlanta, Georgia, we will definitely take you to the next level. Go check out bodydesignu.com. Otherwise, we hope that you have a great week. Doug, anything you could leave you, them with? YouTube, our YouTube channel. Oh, right? guys, if you haven't heard, you haven't seen it, you just Google, Google it, or I should say yeah. YouTube it. YouTube, YouTube it. <laughs> Body Design <laughs> University. Uh, go over there, YouTube yeah, it. Yeah, uh, ton, ton of content. Ton and of content. and uh, it, that, that channel is growing significantly. Just check it out. A lot of feedback, a lot of engagement over there. Um, not only helping people pass their NASM or their ACE, but, you know, dropping a lot of really good, good information. So, uh, guys, we hope you have a great week and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next, uh, Wednesday, 2 PM. See you, Mr. Blake. Yes, sir. Adios amigos. See ya.